So welcome back to another boring video about boilers and in today's video we're going to be running through different types of boiler and giving you some information on how to decide what boiler you have in your home now and which one would be best to replace it with. Just before we head into this video, if you are in the market for a new boiler, then head over to heatable.co.uk where you'll be able to get a fixed price to have a new boiler installed in your home in as little as 24 hours. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for the latest content as it's released. So what is my name? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right, shut up. <laughs> Where am I? Where am I today? <laughs> right, okay. Okay, so there's four main types of boiler in the UK and they are combi boilers, they look a little bit like this. You've got regular boilers, which look like that. You've got system boilers, which are sort of like combi boilers and then you have back boilers. So how do you work out which type of boiler you have now? Well, this is relatively straightforward to do and it's a process of elimination. If you've got a boiler with a separate tank, then that's either gonna be a system boiler, a back boiler, or a regular boiler. Okay, how do you decide between those three ones? Well, if it's a back boiler, your boiler is behind a fire. These are pretty rare. They don't actually make back boilers anymore. So if you do need to replace that, you're gonna have to change to an alternative system. If you've got a regular boiler, then the only really way to identify this would be you've got a separate tank, but also you'll have a separate pump which circulates the water around your property. Nine times out of 10, that pump is gonna be in the airing cupboard with the tank. And then you've got system boilers. System boilers are like regular boilers, so you have a separate tank. However, the pump is built in to the boiler and generally they're a little bit bigger than a regular boiler. Also, the difference between a regular boiler and a system boiler is one of them has a little tank in the loft, which is called an f &E tank, a fill and expansion tank, and that tops up the central heating. On a system boiler, it's a sealed system. Now you can get caught out on this because even with a system boiler, you might have a tank in the loft, but this is a cold water storage tank which tops up the tank. It all gets a bit complicated. Working out between a system boiler and a regular boiler can be tricky and you may need to seek the advice of a, a professional. A professional. Combi boilers are usually pretty easy to identify as you won't have a separate tank that does your hot water. With a combi boiler, everything is done in one unit. So combi boiler is short for combination boiler. Obviously it does hot water and heating all in one unit. If you are enjoying this video, then please do like and subscribe to our channel and we read all the comments. So if you've got any particular questions you'd like us to answer or give us some feedback on the videos, just enter them in to the comments box below and we'll reply as soon as we can. So why are there different types of boiler in this, in this country? Okay. So why do we have different types of boiler? Well, this is all to do with application and suitability for the property. Most properties in the UK have a combi boiler. It's because they're compact and also they're very powerful for central heating and they don't store water, they boil it on demand. So they're very, very efficient. The downsides to a combi boiler are that you can't have more than one hot outlet running at the same time at full pressure. As the boiler only boils water on demand, it has to split this to various outlets if you turn them on at the same time. So if you've got a property with multiple bathrooms, maybe multiple showers, you're not going to be able to have a combi boiler and run these at full pressure. Then you've got regular boilers and system boilers. 
There's not a lot in the, these two different types of system other than the fact that the pump is built into a system boiler and also a system boiler is pressurized for the heating so it's a little bit more efficient. Generally, what you'll find is newer types of property or newer systems will have system boilers and older systems will have regular boilers. And that's because pressurized systems that you get in a system boiler are more efficient. Back boilers are an old technology. They stopped making back boilers in the early 90s and they were very popular in the 70s. Now, when we replace them, we can only really put a combi boiler in as it's the most logical solution. Happy Christmas, because I finished today. Thank you. Thank you. So how much do these different types of boilers cost? Well, to buy the product, this is without installation, for a combi boiler, you generally pay anything from about £700 up to about £1,500. And for a regular boiler, even though there's fewer components, usually these are more expensive products. And that's just because of economies of scale. As there's fewer produced, they cost more to make. Installation wise, on Heatable, you can get a combi boiler supplied and installed starting from £1,675 and a regular boiler, you'd be looking around £2,000. Now this excludes on a regular boiler, your tank or your controls and your pump. So that's just something to bear in mind. With a combi boiler, all the components are in one box and under one guarantee. So if anything went wrong, the manufacturer would cover it. With a regular boiler or a system boiler, you've obviously got the boiler and that'll have its own guarantee or warranty. However, components external of this would technically be at risk. So if you had a regular boiler with a separate tank and a separate pump, separate zone valve, you spend £2,000 putting a new boiler in. Three months later, the central heating's not working. It's not necessarily gonna be an issue with the boiler. It could be that your pump has failed. On Heatable, we give you the option of replacing these components at the time when you change your boiler. Pumps and valves should really be considered as consumable items in terms of the life expectancy of a pump would be five years and the life expectancy of a zone valve, again, would be five years. It's cheaper to have these replaced at the same time when you change the boiler than it is to do it as a standalone job. So the warranty you get on the product depends on the product that you buy. However, on Heatable, something like this Wiesman boiler here would come with a 10 year parts and labor guarantee. And that's for all the components inside this boiler. Regular boilers, generally the warranty period would be the same. So again, Wiesman, 10 years for parts and labor. But just remember components like your pump or your zone valve will be excluded from the warranty. Both boilers cost about the same amount of money to service, so it's no real difference for an engineer to turn up and service this product than it is this product. There's a couple of other different checks and procedures they'd have to carry out, but you generally won't pay any more or any less for anything between these two system types. So hopefully this video has been useful in giving you some further information about the different types of boilers on the market and how to identify what boiler you currently have. If you are in the market for replacing your boiler, then head over to heatable.co.uk and we'll be able to give you a fixed price and have it installed in as little as 24 hours.